you guys about my makeup look for today. I just did just get home from work. I'm pretty tired. I couldn't fall asleep last night. Like, my room was just really hot and sleep just did not come for me. So hopefully I'll sleep tonight. Um, it's not like I spent that much time in bed last night, but Saturday and Sunday I was out of bed like the whole, uh, day and then I passed out pretty fast, but I did have an edible last night. So that's probably why, um, because I started falling asleep at like 1.30 already and then I could not fall asleep. Um, I passed out with the light on for like two hours and then when I actually tried to go to bed, um, I didn't fall asleep because it was like 4 a.m. by the time I actually went to sleep. So we are not doing that again tonight. Sorry, I just wanted to... reapply more of this before I talk about it. So I primed my eyes. With, I just got home from work. I don't know if I said that. I'm pretty tired, obviously, clearly. So I primed my eyes with the uh, Anastasia eye primer, and then I used the Clarins lip oil, and then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay pressed powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I just decided to go back into my Bella Beauté bar, the Sun and the Sea palette. I love this palette for spring and summer, so I really just have been wanting to use this quite a bit. I've used it like a couple times, so I think I used it once last week, and I am used it once this week, and I just love this palette so much, so... I just wanted to use some of the more neutral shades with a pop of blue again. This is like one of my favorite kind of looks to do in the spring. So I went in with overexposed in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Beach Babe. And then I, no, I used Sun Bathe. And then I used Basque on the outer corners. And then for the lid, this is one of my favorite shades in the palette. I used the shade Heat Wave. It's just such a stunning like multi chromey kind of shade and I just love the Bella Beauté bar formula it just works so well and then for my pop of blue on the under eyes I used deep dive and then for the brow bone I used tan lines and then for the inner corners I used the shade siren so it could kind of tie in the blue a little better and I thought it turned out so pretty so yeah love this palette continue to use it as much as I can and I just love it so just went in with that and then I went in with uh, my ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in the shade Prance on the waterline. I haven't used this in a little while, and I thought it just went so well. The blue underneath with this with my shirt, I think it matched so well. So I really like how it turned out. Um, and then I went in with my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. It's not really that great. It's okay. It's not like... It does transfer quite a bit. I had to clean up my crease quite a bit because, like, a lot of it had transferred, so. But at least it's just a sample. At least I didn't spend my own money on it. And then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discover. Well, I did because I did buy the set, but whatever. And then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. And then I primed my face with the Do It Spray and the e.l.f. Liquid Putty Primer. And then I went in with the... I wanted to give the Urban Decay um uh, face bond foundation a second chance so like I said I was gonna try it again for work uh the next time that I worked which was tonight um and this is the shade one fair cool and I don't know it doesn't look horrible but I mean it looks pretty good still from like far away it looks really good on camera but, like, in person, it doesn't look amazing. But it doesn't look terrible. But I would just say I would probably just stick with this foundation at work. I don't really think this is, like, a long wear foundation for me. But I don't know. I haven't really made up my mind. But it does feel dry right now. It started feeling dry around, like, 7, like I said. It starts feeling dry by, like, the last hour. And anyway, then I went into the Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer. I still love this concealer in the shade 10NN. And, it, and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs Powder. And then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press Powder. Oh my god, I'm so tired. I can't wait to go to sleep. 
And then I went into the Pat McGrath Labs bronzer in the shade Naked Desire. And then for my blush, I went into one of my uh, Snow White blushes from ColourPop. Because <coughs> so I've been wanting to go back into one of these for a while. So this is the shade I Wish I Wish. It's such a beautiful blush. So I just went in with that. And then for my highlight, I went into... Can you guess what it is? Can you guess? I just went into my... Where did I just put it? I just have the empty box here. Oh my Lord Jesus. 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 <laughs> went into the... Blend Money Cosmetics Lock, Lock to Loosen, Knock to Loosen palette in the shade Apparition, uh, which is a really beautiful, I don't know if you can see or if I'm blinding you, but it's like a stunning, super sparkly bluish highlighter. I mean, it just goes so well with the Bella Bute Bar shimmers. So I just used that again. By the way, did you guys see Blend Bunny's new collection? I'm not really that obsessed with it. It kind of just looks like a carbon... I mean, I know it's a collaboration with some creator. I'm not really sure who they are, but congratulations to them. I mean, that's amazing. But, like, when I saw the products, it looked straight up like a copy of Be Perfect Cosmetics. And the palette was just another rainbow palette. But, like, this palette is, like, 30 shades. And, like, the layout is really similar to the way that Be Perfect makes their um palettes and I'm like this is like I don't know it's kind of like redundant in a way for Blend Bunny at this point because like I feel like the last releases even though I haven't really gotten any of their eyeshadow palettes since I mean I love the blush palette that blush palette's freaking amazing but I don't really love the collection but ColourPop is coming out with a Beauty and the Beast collection and they teased it yesterday and then they showed the whole collection today and I'm getting the whole thing because I'm obsessed with the collection. I think this is this is like the first collection I'm actually excited for from ColourPop this year. I've only gotten the Golden Hour palette and like a couple of like backups of stuff that I need like my mascaras and my powder. Um, but there hasn't been a collection that I've been excited for, honestly, at all this year. Like, everything has been snooze fest from them for me. That, obviously, you guys know I collect the, the Disney collections from ColourPop. And I did want to get the Sigma Beauty and the Beast palette, but I'm like, why do I have a feeling that ColourPop is going to do their Beauty and the Beast collection sometime this year? Or if they end up doing it, I'm going to get the ColourPop one oh my god, excuse me, over the Sigma one, and they just announced it, and it's coming out on Thursday, so I'm like 100% getting the whole collection. Like, everything is so cute in it. They actually did cheek products. They did two blushes and a highlighter, and I'm like, everything. Yes, they finally did a full collection, but I'm surprised they didn't come out with cream gel liners, but they came out with two lip kits, two blushes, a highlighter, an eyeshadow palette, and a lip mask. And I'm like, everything is so freaking adorable, and I feel like I would wear everything in this collection. So I'm getting it. It's so cute. I really love it, and I have to because I have the Snow White one, and I have the, the Alice in Wonderland one. I have the two Frozen palettes. The only one that I didn't get that was centered around, like, a certain movie because they haven't done too many, like, singular movie collections yet. They've really done, like, um, either, like, the live-action movies, like Haunted Mansion. They came out with the Snow White collection last year, so I thought that they were going to come out with more princess collections later last year. But they didn't, but now they're finally coming out with the Beauty and the Beast collection for Belle. And I'm like... Thank God, finally. <laughs> so anyway, and then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the 
e.l.f. wow brown then for my lips i just went into my lipstick because i had to like run out the door so i just threw it on and i just decided to use the merit lipstick again this is such a nice formula i honestly am debating about picking up another shade because i really love this formula so much so this is the signature lip in the shade and and types i still cannot say the shade name but it goes so it goes so well with my crease shade so that is everything as far as my makeup goes and then as far as a reading update goes i'm still reading the second book in the inheritance game series and this is the hawthorne legacy i just started it yesterday afternoon and i got up to page 150 um, I'm not as far as I would have liked to be, but when I told you guys what page I was on yesterday, I was only on page 30, so I did, or like page 37, so I've read like another, mm, like 110 pages, so that's pretty good. I'm hoping to have this done by tomorrow, because this book isn't that long, so I should be able to finish it by tomorrow, tomorrow night. I'm going to read probably like another 100 pages tonight, probably more because this is really short. Um, they're really short chapters and then like I said, I'll just go right into the final gambit. I think I might just stick to my April TBR for the rest of the month. I don't know if I'm really going to sway from it unless there's, there's two more books that I really want to read though this month. I really want to read Beach Read and I really want to read um, Heartless Hunter because I just picked that up too. And they're just two single books. So I might try and sneak those in before the month is over. But I honestly would like to read Encyclopedia of Fairies and Map of the Other Lands. And then that will just be... Because like after I finish The Brothers Hawthorne, I think I just want to read fantasy for the rest of the month because I haven't really read any fantasy besides One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns because I read so much fantasy last month that I kind of wanted to take a break. But now I'm missing fantasy like very badly. So like after I finish The Inheritance Games, I might just read fantasy for the rest of the month. Like obviously I'm going to read Stolen Aaron, The Prisoner's Throne, but I really want to read Heartless Hunter and then I might just read Encyclopedia of Fairies and Map of the Underlands and then finish out the month that way. Because I really wanted to read Light Lark and Nightbane, but I think I'm going to save those for next month. Because I really would just like to check off two more books from my April TBR before I move on to other books. So, But I do want to read Heartless Hunter next week as well. Besides Stolen Air and Prisoner's Throne. So yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, so hey there guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. So I'm just heading over to my boyfriend's house soon. Um, leaving like in the next 10 minutes. Um, so I primed my eyes with the uh, ColourPop Party Proof Primer. And then I used the Clarins Lip Oil. And then I set my eyes with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I decided to go into my Sigma New Mod Palette. I'm trying to use a different palette every day this week. Um, and I've also used a bit of ColourPop, a bit of <gasps> Be Bella Beauté Bar, a bit of Onesai, a bit of Nomad lately. Of course, Ensley Rain. So I kind of wanted to use Sigma today because they just came out with a new palette. And honestly, it kind of reminded me to whip out a Sigma palette but also like I love how this look goes with this shirt so well so I just decided to use this and I still love Sigma palettes so I went into new mod in the crease then I darkened up the crease more with edgy and then I used street style on the outer corners and then for the lid I just wanted to go into avant-garde and it's so beautiful and then, then I went into preppy for the brow bone and then for the inner corners I used hot 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 however you say it but um so that's everything that I used for my eye look and I love it it always turns out beautiful and then for my waterline I went into the color pop cream gel liner in the shade charmer and then I went in with my Essence Lash Primer. And then for my mascara, I went into the Tower 28 Mascara and Jet. And then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. I feel like I should have picked up the Tower 28 in brown during the sale, but I didn't. Also because I think this Tower 28 Mascara is kind of getting old already. Um, what I don't love about the mascara, I love it. But I feel like it doesn't last too long. But I also 
need to keep better track of when I get my mascaras. And again, I have so much to do at home um, to clean out a bunch of stuff still. Like even though I cleaned out my drawers and my sweater drawer and my bins of clothing, I still have so much to do here. But at least I got that done and I cleaned out my entire bookcase so then I could have room for more books. So that's what I've gotten accomplished. I still need to do my desk and my desk, desk shelves and my closet and I need to vacuum this room and then everything will finally be in order and I'm so excited. I think I'm going to do it with my mom on Monday because I'm going to be home all day for Passover. Um, and then for my face, I primed with the Do It Spray and the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer. And then, of course, I went back into the Beauty Blender. Since it moisturizer, I just can't get enough of it. It's just so beautiful on the skin. So this is the skin tint in the shade Light 1. I'm so excited that I picked this up during the sale. It is so stunning on the skin. So lightweight. I think I like this way more than the Urban Decay Foundation. I don't know if I'm... I think I might end up returning it. I'm not sure yet, but honestly, like, I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's great or good enough to keep. I am I think I'm still going to give it one more chance probably on Friday for work. And if I feel the same way then, then I'm going to be like, I don't know if it's worth keeping, but I love this. Of course, I'll be keeping that. And then for the concealer, I just went into the Tower 28 one in the shade BH. And then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder. And then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. And then for my bronzer, I went into the Milani, Milani, Milani Dolce bronzer in the shade Milani Baked Bronzer in the shade Dolce. And then for my blush and highlight, I went into my ColourPop um pressed powder blush in the shade catch my vibe this is from the making mauves collection i believe but this is the only thing i got from that collection and i love this blush it's one of my favorite spring blushes i actually haven't worn it this spring yet so i was like let me whip it out today and then for my highlight i just used one of my go-to's and one of my favorite spring highlighters as well so this is actually from the was it the Into Bloom collection? There was like a the Nude Mood palette and then there was the Pink palette. But for some reason, I can't remember what the Pink palette was called. But this was the highlighter for the Pink palette. I didn't get the highlighter for the Nude Mood. But they came out with this and like a lippy or something for that collection. And I got this highlighter then. For some reason, I thought that these were part of the same collection because... I was like, why didn't I ever make that connection before? But I'm like, no, they weren't, Caitlin. You're right. Like, they just have very similar packaging. Um, this is from that um, other pink palette. Like, pink... Why can't I remember the name of it? It was like a nine pan. I think it was into bloom or something bloom. I can't remember. And then I set my face with the Do It Spray again. And then I set my brows with the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. And then for my lips, I just went back into my Summer Fridays um dream lip oil in the shade blush dreams i really do love this lip oil formula i love that it has such good pigmentation to it it's just beautiful on the lips and i just wanted to wear it again because it's so easy to wear so that's as far that's what i did as far as my makeup goes today and as far as a reading update goes i did finish the second book in the hawthorne in the Inheritance Game series, I finished the Hawthorne Legacy literally like an hour and a half ago. I actually finished it this afternoon. I didn't finish it last night. But I read like like 170 pages yesterday. Um, I was on page like 89 yesterday morning and I got up to page 265 yesterday. So I read a lot and then I read like 20 pages this morning and then I just finished it this afternoon. So, and it was really good. I'm really enjoying this series. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and now I'm just going to jump right into the third one tonight um, when I get home and I'm really, really excited. It's just been such a good time. They're just such easy, fast-paced page turner books. Like, you just, these really do not take long to get through. If you just want an easy, fun little series, I feel like you're really going to enjoy this. So, I think it's just been a really good time. I'm so glad I finally got to this series. And it's just been so good. Like, I really have been enjoying it. And then, after that, I will just jump right into... The last book in the series right now, The Brothers Hawthorne, because 
the other two books are going to be coming out later this year. I forget exactly when, but there is uh, Games Untold is coming out like sometime, I think in the summer and the fall, summer or the fall. So I'm reading this series to catch up with it and then I am all caught up with Throne of the Fallen to come out in September, and then I should be caught up with Encyclopedia of Fairies and Map of the Otherlands by the end of this month because that book comes out in January as well, but it's not the end of the world that I finish it in May. Um, so yeah, I have decided that I'm just going to finish off the month with fantasy because I've only read two fantasy books this month because like I said, I did want to read some other genres this month. So I'm planning to read at least four fantasy books by the time I'm done with the Inheritance Game series and then I'm going to read one more romance. So I'm going to read Stolen Air, Prisoner's Throne, Heartless Hunter, Encyclopedia of Fairies, and Beach Read. So those are going to be my five more books for this month. I should, I would think that that is achievable because Encyclopedia of Fairies is a shorter book And I don't want to heavily judge myself too much for not reading as much as last month. The only reason why I read 16 books last month is because the book that I read last, which was The King of Elfsheim, was only 160 pages and I finished that in a day. So, and then I finished the short story. So I I shouldn't really heavily judge myself because... It's still a full book, but it's full of short stories, so it wasn't that hard for me to finish 16 books. And also, um, in the beginning of last month, I had already finished my first book in April, but technically I, I mean in March, but I technically started it, well I did start at the end of February, I started the 27th and I finished it on the 1st, and that was Powerless. So that would, that was my first book of the month, but technically... Out of the whole month, I read 15 full books. So it seems that 15 is my sweet spot. And I was looking at where I was at last month at this point in the month. And I was on my 10th book by that point. But right now I'm on my 9th. But that's only because I finished Powerless April, I mean March 1st. If I would have finished it in at the end of uh, February, then I would have still only read 15 books last month. So I'm still at where I should be for this month and I should get 15 books read. If not, maybe like 14 and a half. I probably should be on my 15th book by the time the 30th hits, but I have to decide whether or not, because like I said, I have gold myself to read five more books after Brothers Hawthorne in like I think 10 days which I don't know is if it's going to be achievable because I have to read each book in two days but also on the 30th I am going to drop anything that I'm reading and just read powerful because I am dying to read that book and also it's only 192 pages I might be able to finish it in a day And then that will probably count as my 15th book. So I'm going to do Heartless Hunter, Stolen Air, Prisoner's Throne. And then I think I'm going to do Beach Read. And then I will be on Encyclopedia of Fairies probably by the 29th. So that's only two weeks to finish seven books, which is usually my rate. So we will see. I should have the final gambit done by Friday and the Brothers Hawthorne by Sunday night. And then I'm going to jump right into Heartless Hunter on Monday. I'm so excited to read that book. And also, like, I snuck that book in because originally it was just going to be Stolen Air, Prisoner's Throne, Encyclopedia of Fairies, Map of the Otherlands, and Beach Read. But I'm dying to read, um... Heartless Hunter and the reason why I'm still reading Beach Read this month even though I was like I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to it is because I really 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 want to read it before Funny Story comes out because Funny Story comes out the 23rd which is going to be Emily Henry's newest book and I also really want to read that in May but I also really want to get Beach Read 
read first because it's supposed to be your best book. And I don't want to read Funny Story before I haven't read Beach Read. I just feel like that's like sacrilege when it comes to Emily Henry. I feel like you have to read Beach Read out of all the books that she has. I have to read that book. And then I'll get one more romance read this month. But then that will only be three romances this month. But... I did read two thriller books for Mystery Adventure, and then I'm going to read about five or six fantasy books. So that's why three. But it's still three. I feel like I'll stick to that rate most months, but I think I'm going to read more romance next month, and I'm also going to read the Red Queen series next month. And I'm probably not going to read the Red Queen series until the middle of May, like I did with the Inheritance Games. Like I said, I think sticking to reading series now in the middle of the month is better. The reason why I read so many series last month is because I read a lot of trilogies. So then that I read a lot of fantasy trilogies instead of reading like a full series. Um, Kingdom of the Wicked, Once Upon a Broken Heart, and Cruel Prince. But after that, I was going to take a seat from fantasy and not read like long fantasy series. I was just going to read duologies. That's why I'm reading Stolen Air and Prisoner's Throne uh, and One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns. So, and then Encyclopedia of Fairies and Map of the Under- Other Lands is technically a duology right now because the third bi- book doesn't come out until January. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go. Bye. Okay, so hi. Um, so I just want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, just wanted to say that I'm not going to be in the greatest mood. Um, been dealing with some personal stuff the past couple of days. Um, my boyfriend's stepfather is going to be taking off life support today. Um, he had a stroke on Sunday and has been in the hospital since. And he took a really big, uh, turn and a decline in his health uh, a couple days ago so uh, unfortunately today is the day so um it's been weird for me um but yeah that's what's happening Um, so he's going to have to go to the hospital soon, and, um, I'm just going to have to wait it out until he's back home with his mom and his sister, so I don't know what time that's going to be, um, but I did tell him that I would come as soon as, you know, he's able to tell me when they're coming home, so, um, yeah. That's what's been going on. Um, He, they had asked me if I wanted to visit in the hospital and my boyfriend was telling me like when he visited him yesterday that he isn't really conscious. So um, I'm just going to have the memory of when he was at his best. Um. And that's all I can hope for. He was always so sweet to me and always so funny. And there's a lot of things wrong with somebody, but there's also like those little things that you remember. So, yeah. I mean, I saw him like every time I would come over. So it's like, it's a weird feeling. I'm just going to miss, like, his constance and his presence in that house. And it's definitely going to change the atmosphere in that house dramatically. So, that's what I'm coping or trying to cope with. Um, I mean, he's 84. Um, he's lived a long, long time, but... It's, it's just going to be hard, so, yeah, um, I don't know when everything is going to be arranged, um, like, I don't know if it's gonna be this weekend, um, 
or whenever they decide to plan everything, but it's just so sad. I'm, I'm pretty deeply uh, impacted by this because, I don't know, it's just, I was with him yesterday and I'm going to be with him tonight and I know tonight's going to be really hard, so... I just didn't think it was going to be so soon because it's been since Sunday and today's like the fifth day that he's been in the hospital and it's just really sad. So I primed my eyes with the ColourPop Party Proof Primer and then I used the Clarins Lip Oil and then I set my eyes with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Powder and then for my eyeshadow palette today I used the ColourPop Rock On Palette. I actually haven't used this in a little while, so I wanted to use it today. Um, and I went in with Rock My World in the crease. Then I darkened up the crease more with Fave Hike. And then I used Trail Mix on the outer corners. And then I put Chasing Sunsets on the lid. And then I used um, Vortex on the inner corners. And then Brighter Days on the brow bone. I know I'm probably just going to cry this all off later, so yeah. Um, kind of feels redundant to be wearing makeup right now, but, um, I was waiting for him to text me, and, uh, I had a feeling the inevitable was coming today. I had a feeling it was going to be today, so. And then I went in with the Makeup Forever Brown Liner in the shade Limitless Brown, and then I went into the Essence Lash Primer, and then I went into the ColourPop. Uh, Act Natural Mascara in the shade Brown, and then I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes, and then I primed my face with the Do It Spray and the um, Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer, and then for my foundation and concealer, I went into the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydrolonic Acid Tint Moisturizer in the shade Fair 1N. And then I went into the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer in the shade 090. And then I set my under eyes with the House Labs powder. And then I set my face with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. And then I went into the ColourPop uh, Bronzer in the shade Alviva Beach. And then I went into my ColourPop Blush in the shade uh, No Rules. Just a really good everyday color. And then I went into the Milani highlighter in the shades um, Pearl and Golden Quartz. And um, I'm just glad, honestly, I was supposed to work tonight and I'm glad that I switched because, like, I didn't know that this was going to happen. You know, obviously I didn't, but also, like, it's weird how these things play out sometimes because I was supposed to work tonight and then I switched to work tomorrow just so I can be there for him tonight that's how it ended up I mean like I didn't switch because of this I switched because my co-worker needed coverage tomorrow night and he offered two clothes for me tonight but then I didn't even see that he clocked in so I don't even know if he came but he did say he was gonna cover me today so oh well I don't know what happened um maybe he just didn't clock in um but that's what he told me. <laughs> and then I set my face with the Do It Spray again. And then I set my brows with the ColourPop Brow Wash Gel. And then for my lips, I went into the ColourPop uh, Velvet Blur Lipstick in the shade Bloom to Bloom. So that's what I used for my makeup today. And then um, as far as a reading update goes, I started the third book in the Inheritance Games last night. So I'm on the final gambit. And I'm on page 120, which... I really do want to get further in this. I think I'm just going to read for the next like hour or two until he tells me when to come over. Um, I don't know what time I'm leaving. It probably won't be until maybe 5, 5.30. I mean, like he said, in an hour, which is like, I, I mean, I guess they're going now. So they're going to be there probably at least... A couple of hours so I have to wait until he tells me when to come um, I might leave the house around like five though and just like kill time somewhere I'm not sure yet 
I tried to see if my friend was available just to meet for like a drink or something so I had somebody to talk to about it but I don't know I don't think she's really up for doing anything because it's like super rainy outside but she usually gets headaches then so I think I'm just gonna be home and wait but I'll see if I decide to like stop by the mall or something or stop by my job and talk to people there but yeah um kind of glad to be working tomorrow and Saturday so I have something to take my mind off of it but it's just weird I was also thinking about that like he'll never see me and Josh get married which kind of sucks but my best friend never saw us get married either but at least my parents will be there and his mom I just feel really bad for his mom right now because obviously he's her whole life like he's the one that um worked and she spent like all of her time with him every day so yeah and he was lucky to work from home um so they would spend so much time together but It sucks, um, but we all have our good days and our bad days. Um, I was with him last night and I got upset last night because I figured like, you know, and I'm going to be sad for the next few days, I feel like, um, but at least my boyfriend said his goodbyes for me, um, and told him that I love him and I'm gonna miss him making me laugh because he was such a funny person. He was such a funny guy. He was mo always making people laugh. So, yeah, and that's like the best quality I feel like someone could have in life is making people laugh is my favorite thing about my boyfriend and my favorite thing about somebody is if you can make me laugh, I'm pretty much your friend and I will be your friend and your person for life because... I just think everybody needs a little bit more laughter in their lives and a bit more reasons to smile, so, yeah. I'm gonna go. Bye. Okay, so hey there, guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, I just got home from work. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, Josh's stepdad passed away last night around 9, um, it was pretty sad. I was actually with him till like 9.30 last night. At, at like It was just me and Josh at his house last night. Um, and his mom and his sister stayed at the hospital with everyone. And yeah, so it's really sad. Um, so I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer. And then I used the Clarence Lip Oil. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay Pressed Powder. And then for my eyeshadow... I went into the Nomad Aquavango Safari palette and the Nomad New Zealand Stargazing palette. Can you fucking speak? And I just used one shade in this palette because I just used it as, um, sorry, I just get so frustrated sometimes. I'm like, I literally just said the name, like, are you a dumbass? So I went into the shade Elusive Leopards and I just used that in the crease because I just wanted like one like grounding shade and honestly I prefer the mattes in this palette over the mattes that are in the stargazing palette but I kind of wanted to use the blues in here again but I didn't necessarily want to use like the lighter peachy tone shade in here even though I could have like I could have went in with this shade but honestly it's not really as pigmented as the ones in the Akavango Safari palette so I just used that shade and then the rest of the look I just used this palette so I went into I can never read these freaking names this blue shade I'm just gonna say this blue shade in the crease then I darkened up the outer corners with the black shade on the outer corners and then for the lid I went into Milky Way again I just love this shade so I wanted to use it again I think I've used this shade like three times at this point. Like I think I've actually used all the shimmers in this palette like twice. So I have used the palette quite a lot. It's a beautiful palette. Like I love the color scheme. It's just like the quality of the Royal Europe palette. Royal Europe palette 
oh my god, is way better than uh, the quality of this one, but I still really love the shimmers in here. And then I just went into miscellaneous clouds or man manganelic clouds, sorry, in the inner corners. And that's everything I used for my look today. And then I just used my uh, Brighter Days from Br Blend Bunny on the brow bone. And then for my <sighs> eyeliner, I went into the ColourPop Gel Liner in the shade Prance because I've been really loving this one lately and it went really well with my look. And then I went into the Essence Lash Primer and then for my mascara... I went into the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara again, and then I went into my Maybelline Lash Discovery, of course, for the bottom lashes, and then I primed my face with the, uh, the, I'm so tired, the Do It Spray and the Elf Liquid Poreless Putty Primer, and then for my foundation, I went back into the Urban Decay Face Bond Foundation in the shade One Fair Cool. I don't think this is the foundation for me, guys. It just doesn't look great at the end of the day. Like, it looks so... I don't know. I don't think I'm going to keep it. It's just so dry at this point. I mean, honestly, the first few hours that I'm wearing it, it's fine. But I don't need to keep a foundation that's just fine, you know? Um, I much prefer the Laura Mercier foundation still. I'm not really in love with this one. And I love the Beauty Blender Skin Tint that... I can see why people didn't really love this. Again, it doesn't look, honestly, it looks okay, but it's like worn off completely on my nose around like my nose area here. It's very dry and all of my pores here, it's dry as well. It still looks good on the general part of my face, but I could see like the dry marks here and it gets extremely like greasy on my forehead. So it doesn't really look great at the end of the day. It kind of makes me look like a crepey old lady, to be honest. Even though, again, it looks good on camera, like, it doesn't look that great in person. Like, I need some setting spray right now. Like, I shouldn't have to feel that way at the end of the day about a foundation because none of my other foundations feel like this at the end of the day. And when I put the setting spray on, it just feels even drier. So I just want to, like, rip it off. And I feel like no matter how much setting spray I put on, it doesn't really help anything. So, I just, it feels as dry as a bone right now. And then for my uh, concealer, I went into the Urban Decay Stay Naked Quickie Concealer. I can't wait to rip this off my face, to be honest. In the shade 10 and N. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs Powder. And then I set my face with the Urban Decay Press Powder. And I don't think it's the powder. Because I've used that powder for years at this point, and it doesn't feel like this with, like, the, the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation, which is still a fantastic foundation. Like, this foundation doesn't even hold a candle to that one. That one is a ma an amazing foundation. So, yeah. I feel like they should have just maybe updated the formula of that one or just redid the packaging because that foundation was amazing. I don't know why they discontinued it for this. Even the all-nighter foundation was better than this one. Like, it didn't feel this dry at the end of the day. And that foundation was full coverage, but it's still such a good foundation. Like, it did not feel like this at the end of the day. I distinctly remember that was a really good foundation. And then for my bronzer, I went into the Pat McGrath Labs bronzer in the shade Naked Desire. It just feels so dry right here. Like, right in this area. Like, my, all my pores are clogged. And then for my blush, I went into the Gimme Glow blush in the shade One in a Melon. It's such a cute name. And every time I say this name, I always get One in a Million by Miss Con in the Miss Congeniality movie stuck in my head. Like, you're one in a million. So I always get it stuck in my head every time I say this name. You're one in a melon. <laughs> and I sound like an idiot. <laughs> and then for my highlighter, I went into the Half Magic Beauty Light Trap Highlighter. This is the Duochrome Glow Powder in the shade, uh, I believe it's called Light Trap, right? Yeah. It's so stunning. I love this highlighter. So pretty. You can still see it. It's gorgeous. And then I set my face with the Milk Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the Elf Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I just went in to make my ColourPop Minute Man lip liner and then for my lips 
I went into my Give Me Glow, like, Give Me Glow, my Give Me Glow liquid lipstick in the shade All That's Apricot because I like using this with the blush. And I actually haven't used this liquid lipstick in like a hot second, so I wanted to use it tonight. And I always love peach and blue together, so that's everything I used as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I actually did finish the final gambit like literally two hours ago at work. I finished it at like 7.45, like right before I closed the store. So I only had like 50 pages left when I went to work because I read like almost 100 pages before. I did not finish it last night. I got way too sleepy, but I read like over 150 pages yesterday. So I just feel like I'm so far behind on my reading goals this month. I don't know why, but... I am now going to start the fourth book in the Inheritance Games, which is the Brothers Hawthorne. So I'm very excited for this one. This one's probably the one I'm the most excited about because I feel like a lot of people stopped reading it after the final gambit. Also, I feel like a lot of people felt like it was kind of a trilogy, but like all the YouTubers that I watch or all the booktubers that I watch, I don't see them even owning this one or even like continuing with the series after the third one because I heard like very mixed things about this one, but I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be good. So this is the last one that is currently out in this series and then I will be all caught up with it. I really liked the final gambit though. I thought it was great. It kept up the same momentum as the first two did. I was not bored whatsoever. I thought it was really fun. It was a little bit more suspenseful. I gave it another 4.5 out of 5 stars. All three of them have been 4 have been 4.5s for me. They're really really good. I really have just been enjoying them. Still haven't really found any other 5 stars yet, but like I said, I felt like this month was not really going to be a 5 star month for me. But I'm hoping with the last five books that I have on my list after the Brothers Hawthorne because after I finish this I'm gonna go right into the Stolen Air duology which is Stolen Air and Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. I'm missing my fantasy reads so and those have been on my list since I bought them obviously and I can't wait to be back in the Cruel Prince world because it was so amazing but also like I have not really read that much fantasy this month because I read Romance thriller and mystery adventure with this series but I really wanted to get this series read in this month so yeah I'm going to start it like very soon probably like in an hour or two we'll see how long we'll see how far I get into it tonight because this is actually the longest book out of the four which I'm like why is this one like 100 pages longer I kind of wish it was like still like 370 380 this one's like 469 pages I think something around there um, and it already says the the name of the fifth book. Yeah, it's 469 pages. And then the last, the next book that is coming out is called The Grandest Game, which is actually what the games are called at the end of the final gambit. So now I understand what The Grandest Game actually means. If you've read The Final Gambit, you will find out if you've read the Inheritance Game series. So yeah, I'm excited to get into that one. And that's it. Bye. Okay, so hey there guys, I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. My head is killing me. I need some Advils. <laughs> Probably gonna take some very soon. But I am home. I got home around like 9.50ish. Um, like I said, I was gonna go over my besties and we played Mario Kart and um, Mario Party. We played like two rounds of Mario Party. That was like two hours and then we played Mario Kart. Um, because I was going out with my coworkers tonight because we won this like contest money for comping our month where we sold more than um, we were gold for in the month so we went out to a korean actually it wasn't korean barbecue it was japanese barbecue and it was so good and it's an all-you-can-eat place and actually they are pretty nice about not charging you for what you don't eat because they're not like one of those places that just like constantly brings it to you because honestly like how do people eat that shit unless you're like a <laughs> Unless you're like a 
athlete's team or like a sports team that needs like 2,000 calories a day, 3,000 calories a day, then I understand if you need to go there. (laughs) But like, it's just a lot of food. But it was so good. And I ate just enough where I wasn't like dying. But they, it's like a, a hot pot and also meat. And it was, the ramen was so good. And the meat was so good. But you like literally cook it in front of you. And it was, everything was delicious. Oh my god. Um, and it was really fun. But um, I went there at like, we made the reservation for 7. And I left his place at like 645. And like literally the place was like 10 minutes away. So I literally got there at like 7 o'clock. So, um, yeah, it was great. It was so much fun. So I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer. At least I did something fun this weekend because I hate when I don't do anything fun on the weekend. I get really mad if I don't. (laughs) And tomorrow I'm going to be home all day because it's Passover. So I don't think I'm even wearing makeup tomorrow. I I don't even plan to wear makeup tomorrow. I actually have been having a couple more makeup-free days and it's actually been pretty nice. Because then I can just read tomorrow. I'm so excited. And then I just used my Clarins Lip Oil. And then I set my eyes with the Urban Decay Pressed Powder. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I went into the Ensley Rain Cosmetics Groovy Garden Palette. um, Because I just wanted to use this. And I knew since I wasn't wearing makeup tomorrow, I really just wanted to use this palette again. Because... I freaking love this palette. I've been using it so much since I've gotten it. I think I've used almost every shimmer twice again. I think except for this one. I think I've actually used all of them again except for this one because that's how much I've used this palette. I love it so much and I think I love this palette even more so than the cold moon because this one has so many mattes in it and I just love their formula. It's so easy to use. So I went in with Marvy in the crease, then I darkened up the crease more with Peace, and then I used Dig It on the outer corners, and then for the lid, I just went into Jazzed, and this is a lot more greenish than you think it would be, because I was like, I don't know how well it's going to go with my look. Oh yeah, I also haven't used this one again, but I was going to go in with this one, but I was like, no, I really want to use this one, and it looked so good. I was like, okay, it goes so well with the pink and green, so... Now I understand why they put this in there because it goes so well with the other colors in this palette. And then I went into Free Thunder on the brow bone, of course, because I always use that one. And then Free Thinker, not Free Thunder. And then for the inner corners, I went into Moonchild. And that's everything I used from the palette. And then for my eyeliner, I went into the... uh, ColourPop cream cream gel liner in the shade Agate, which is the green. And then I went to the Essence Lash Primer. And then for my mascara, I went in... Oh my god, I won't stop burping because I ate so much. I went into the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. And then for my bottom lashes, I went into the Maybelline Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes. Also, I was trying not to eat before... <laughs> I went to the all-you-can-eat place because usually I don't really get that hungry in the middle of the day, but I was actually really hungry for lunch when I got to my friend's uh, apartment. I was like, can we please get lunch? So we ordered from this other, um, I think it was a Asian cuisine place. Th- those are different than Chinese and Japanese restaurants. And they had like dumplings and all this stuff. So I decided to order dumplings and scallion pancakes so I didn't have too much food before. Um, And then my friend just got, oh my god, sorry, the lighting changed on the, on the lights. It has like a lighting change. It was a ghost. (laughs) Um, So, but then I was like not really that, I mean I was like a little hungry when we went to the all-you-can-eat place. But again, I didn't eat too much. I ate just enough. So... It was so good. Everything was bomb. Um, and then I primed my face with the Do It Spray and the Elf Liquid Putty Primer. And then for my foundation, I went into the Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation in the shade Very Light. And then for my concealer, I went into the Tarte C Concealer in the shade Porcelain Sand. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs Powder. And then I set my face with the Urban Decay Pressed Powder. 
And then for my bronzer, I went into the Gucci bronzer right here in the shade 01 because I love this bronzer. And then for my blush, I just went into my Dior blush, the backstage one in the shade Rosy Glow just because I really wanted to use it. Actually, this is 012 Rosewood. And then for my highlighter, I went into the Give Me Glow Cosmetics highlighter in the shade Halo, and then I set my face with the Milk Makeup set Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the Elf Wow Brow, and then for my lips, I went into the, uh, let's see, um, I went into the, and I have to do interview prep tomorrow with my sister's husband, because he's, like, really good at it, because I actually do have a job interview on Wednesday, so, yeah, and then for my, but I am going to read for a lot of the day, too, like, when I want to take breaks memorizing what I need to memorize for this interview, I'm just going to read, so, and then for my lips, I went into the Gucci liquid lipstick in the shade, I don't remember what shade this is, Mildred Rosewood. It's such a beautiful pink. So that's everything I use as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, I'm still reading, like I said, The Brothers Hawthorne. And I got pretty far last night and I'm on page 303. So that's a lot better than 95. So I got another 205 pages read. Um, I read like 170 pages last night. I wanted to read like a hundred and I think it was like a hundred and seventy, right? Let's see. I think I was got on page like two fifty two. So I went from ninety five to two fifty two. Okay. I read a hundred and fifty seven pages. I read like a hundred and eighty pages over the course of the whole day. And then today I just read fifty pages because I didn't have that much time to read before I went out to my friend's house but I just read a little bit like for like 45 minutes or so before I got ready to leave but I'm going to finish it tonight because I have like three hours so I should be able to finish this tonight um I still have like a hundred and something pages left like 160 ish but hopefully we'll be able to finish it this book is just so long but honestly it's so fast paced and I can't wait to see what happens with the game that they're playing right now it's just been a good time and honestly I've been really having a good time with this I just think it's a little bit too long compared to the other ones but honestly I haven't been bored at all it's still been very fun to read so like I said these books are a fun time so yeah that's it bye Hey, so hey there guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. Um, today was the day of uh, my boyfriend's stepdad's funeral. Um, it was actually like really early in the morning. It was like at like 9.45 a.m. So I had to get up at like 8 this morning. I'm just going to turn this down. It's like way too bright. Um, so I had to be there at like 9.30 and... Um, they had the service and then we went to the the cemetery for the short uh like burial there and then um we actually went to a luncheon after that which is usually what you do um and we went to this really good italian restaurant called gacciadoro it was really delicious um you know i just was able to meet a bunch of um his stepdad's relatives and his children and it was really really nice to meet them um or re-meet them again and see them again um because I have met some of them before um and then after the lunch we just went back to the house like his mom's house and we just spent like three hours there because by the time the brunch was the lunch was over it wasn't it was like four o'clock at that point, a little bit after four. So we were at the br the lunch. Why do I keep on saying brunch? Oh my God. The lunch for like 
almost three hours, I feel like, because the the service at the cemetery was over at like, it was only like 10 minutes. It wasn't even that long because obviously we had a service at the church. Uh, so yeah, it's just been a really long, tiring day. <coughs> um, and actually my boss asked me, asked me to come in and close and I'm like, I really thought I was actually going to be home like late afternoon, but I didn't get home until this evening. I didn't get home until like eight um, because I hung out at his house for like three hours after everything. And I was like talking to his mom and like her family members from El Salvador because his mom is actually from El Salvador. She immigrated to uh the u.s so um so yeah it was really nice just being able to relax a little bit after that i didn't get any sleep i never sleep when i have to get up early so i pray so yeah it was (coughs) it was nice to meet some of uh his family so I primed my eyes with the Anastasia eye primer and then I used the Clarins lip oil oil, and then I set my eyes with the Dior powder and I told my boss like I don't think I can because I don't I was I didn't know what time I was getting home and honestly I was way too exhausted to work today because again I was up so early and I just wanted to go home after I left his house if I like Honestly, I would have had to leave the lunch early. Um, I would have had to leave the lunch at like 2.30 because I would have wanted to go home and relax a little bit. But honestly, I didn't really have any time for that. Because by the time I would have gotten home, it would have been like 3 p.m. And I'm like, yeah, I really don't feel like working tonight. I was just way too tired. And then for my eyeshadow palette today, I actually went into the Natasha Denona My Dream palette. Because... Um... I just wanted to use this palette today and I just went in with like the more smoky cooler tones. It did actually end up creasing on my eyes but that's because I did get a little upset at the church. I figured it was gonna get kind of ruined on my eyeshadow like on this side like this side was fine and then this side got really creased and then like throughout the day because I wore this look for like 12 hours because I put I did my makeup at like 8.30 this morning, so I didn't really expect it to last all day, and honestly, like, I didn't think it was that big of a deal because I thought I was going to get a little upset anyway, so I went in with Nurture in the crease, then I darkened up the crease more with Aspiration, and then I went into Black is Black on the outer corners, and then for the lid, I just went in with Serenity, and then for the inner corners, I forgot I was going to use Babies. But I just decided to go into Spontaneous, which is usually my go-to inner corner highlight in this palette. I love this palette so much. It's such a beautiful palette. Maybe I should have put more eyeshadow on again, but honestly, it looked so good after I did it. I was like, I really don't think I need any more, but then of course it ended up creasing like here and here, but it's fine. Like I said, I didn't really expect it to last all day today. Like, it's not like... um the Cosmic Brushes palette, which literally just came off my lid almost completely because I was outside because it was windy out. Like, this was totally different because I was, like I said, like, it's different when I was crying. Um, And then for my eyeliner, I don't know where I put it, but I just used the Makeup by Mario liner in the shade uh, Darkest Brown or something like that. I think that's what it's called. I think it's right here, actually. Um... Yeah, soft brown, and then I went in just with my Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara, and I just primed with my Essence Lash Primer, of course, and then I used the Maybelline uh, Lash Discovery on the bottom lashes, and then I primed my face with the uh, Do It Spray and the Makeup Forever, and the, I mean, e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer, and then for my foundation and concealer, I went into the Makeup Forever one. I love this foundation so much. I just wanted something easy, something lightweight, something that makes my skin look beautiful, 
and this is it. I love this foundation. It makes my skin look so naturally beautiful. I love this so much. And then for my concealer, I just went into the Coinciding Concealer, the HD Skin by Makeup Forever. And, and I'm in the shade 1R02 and the concealer I'm in 1.1N. Like I am with like every single concealer. And then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Laps Powder and then I set my face with the Dior Powder. And then for my bronzer, I actually went into my Dior bronzer today because I haven't used this in like a hot second. So I was like, I kind of wanted to keep with the cool tones. So I just went into the Dior bronzer in the shade 01 Tan Bronze. And then for my blush, oh, and this is why I used the, well, I was going to, I was intending on using this anyway, but I actually have not used the eyeshadow palette with the mini uh, blush highlighter duo. So I was like, let me do that because they're part of the same collection. So I just mixed together the, the two blushes and I used the highlighter. This highlighter is so stunning. Like you think it's going to be some subtle highlighter, but it just adds the most beautiful glow to your cheeks. It's so pretty. And then I set my face with the Milk Makeup Setting Spray. And then I set my brows with the e.l.f. Wow Brow. And then for my lips, I didn't even do lip liner because I wanted to get out of the house by like 9.15. I actually left the house by 9.10. I got up at 8 and I left at 9.10. So I'm pretty impressed with myself because obviously I had to have breakfast too. So for my lips, I just went into my Tom Ford lipstick because I just really wanted to use it. And I love this lipstick. I use it every chance that I get. Um, this is the lip color in the shade Blush Nude. I don't know why I'm looking at the bottom. I think I forgot the name for a second. So that's everything that I used as far as my makeup goes. And then as far as a reading update goes, like I said, I did start... I think actually I was reading this the entire day yesterday. I forgot since I didn't really wear makeup yesterday because I was home most of the day, but I actually had to go out and do something, but I didn't want to put on makeup because all I had to do was go to the ATM at my bank and then I just went and got, an, and got a massage so I could relax a little bit before today. But obviously, like, I didn't sleep, so. But at least I got the massage because it felt so good. Um, and basically, any chance that I got to read yesterday, I did. And I got halfway through, and I got on page, like, 205. And then today, I've just read, like, 40-ish pages. And I'm not even because I started falling asleep already. But I'm going to try and finish this tonight or at least get through another 100-ish pages at least because I have like three hours. So I'm going to try and get through as much as possible. Isn't this cover so sick though? But honestly, like, I'm not really loving this. I don't know. Like, I thought I was going to really love this, but I'm just, I don't know. I just really want like, I mean, it's good. It's It's well written and it's not like I'm um, like, hating it. I'm just not in love. Like, I'm liking it, but I thought that this was going to be, like, something that I was obsessed with, but I heard that the ending is pretty crazy, so I think the last 100 pages, it's really going to pick up, but sometimes, like, for me, in order for something to be a five star, like, I need the whole thing to keep me completely enthralled and in love with the characters, and honestly, like, I'm not really die hard for either of the characters in this, but I'm still enjoying it. But I'm not like, oh my god, I need to see what happens next. I haven't really been feeling like that with this book. But, oh, let me just hit myself in the face. Um, So yeah, like I said, I'm on page 238. So far, I'm liking it. I'm not in love. Um, But... I just really haven't fallen in love with any books this month. I only had one five-star read this month, which was As Good As Dead, and that's just because I thought that trilogy was really great, and I thought that that was, like, very well written, and it kept my interest and suspense, like, the whole time, but I'm not, like, die hard for the characters. Like, I like the characters of a book, but usually for me, like, the difference between, like, the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and 
the only one left is that the only one left kept me enthralled like the entire time like the same thing about the good girl's guide to murder like honestly all three were fantastic books but there's just like bits and pieces of these books that just weren't five star for me except for as good as dead I really, every other book that I've read this month, it's not like I've read a bad book. It's just everything has been four star. Literally every book has been four star except for As Good As Dead. I'm having a feeling this is going to be a four star read as well. But if it doesn't pick up soon, I don't know. Like, I I might even rate it a bit lower than that. I thought I was going to be in love with it because a lot of people seem to love this book so far. But I'm, I feel like Stolen Air, Prisoner's Throne, and Beach Read are all potential five stars for me. I feel like Beach Read is going to be a five star and I feel like one of the Holly Black books is going to be a five star because I thought that this was going to be more, way more fantasy in this book and I'm just like, it's, it's like dueling, um characters because one is a witch hunter and the other is the witch. And it's it's interesting, but at the same time, I felt more interested about the witches in, um, like, uh, Kingdom of the Wicked or, um, what's the other series that I read with? Some, oh, Throne of Glass. I was more interested in the witches in Throne of Glass, like, 100%. Like, Manon, like, hello, she's, she's my bae, so I don't know. Hopefully it picks up soon. I'm definitely going to finish it, though. Like, I only have 160 pages left, so I'm just going to bang it out. Like I said, hopefully I'll just finish, the, uh, at least get through another 100 pages tonight. And then maybe I'll just finish it tomorrow. It depends on how tired I get because, like I said, I didn't really sleep, so. Um, but I made the decision that I'm only going to read 14 books this month, but that's still 14 books. Like, that's nothing to be upset about. I need to stop rambling. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so hey there guys. I want to tell you guys about my makeup look for today. I'm just going to do this really quickly because I want to leave to get to my boyfriend's house. So I actually did have my first interview in case management today and it actually went very well. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so I just wanted to keep my look, you know, professional and, you know, neutral looking but not boring. Um, so I primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer, and then I used the Clarins Lip Oil, and then I set my eyes with the uh, Dior Powder, actually. And then for my eyeshadow palette, I just went into one of my favorite neutral palettes, which is the Sigma Ambiance Palette. Um, and I used a few shades from this. I went into Daylily in the Crease, then I darkened up the crease more with Oasis, and then I used uh, Sunspot on the outer corners. And then for the lid, I just really wanted to use Firefly. I don't even know if that's the shade that I used the last time that I used this palette, but I was just really drawn to that one, so I just used that. And then for the inner corners, I went into Sunflower. I mean, I went into all of these shimmers like multiple times because this used to be like my go-to neutral palette, and then I ended up using like the, gold, the Golden Sun palette is very similar to this one from ColourPop, but I still really love that palette, so I thought it was just perfect. And I wore, like, my uh, business suit blazer and white shirt, so I looked very professional. And then I went into the Brighter Days from Blend Bunny on the Brow Bone, of course, from the Forget Me Not palette. And then I went into the Makeup by Mario liner in the shade Soup. Uh, I always forget what the actual name is super brown something like that I don't even know it's like the lighter brown shade and then I went into the essence lash primer of course and then for my mascara I went into just my Lancome idol mascara and then I went into the Maybelline lash discovery on the bottom lashes and then I primed my face with the do it spray and the uh rare beauty illuminating primer and then for my foundation I went into the Anastasia Beverly Hills luminous foundation I kind of feel like I should have went into my Makeup Forever foundation today rather than yesterday, but this one works just as well, so I just used this in the shade 110C, and then for my concealer, I went into the Stay Naked Concealer by Urban Decay in the shade 10NN, and then I set my under eyes with the Pat McGrath Labs powder, and then I set my face with the Dior powder, and then 
For my bronzer, I went into the Marc Jacobs Omega bronzer in the shade Tantric, and then I went into my Sigma Duo, the Sigma Cinderella Duo, because I thought that just went perfectly, and I actually haven't used it in a hot second. So I went into the blush and highlighter. Um, this shade is Ever After for the blush, and then the highlighter is a glow, and it just looks beautiful. I love this highlighter as well. They're just Sigma makes fantastic products. I love everything that they come out with. And then I set my face with the Milk Setting Spray, and then I set my brows with the, uh, actually, I don't know if I did set my brows. I think I just brushed them out. I don't even remember actually putting brow gel on. Maybe I should do that really quick. I don't think I did. I think I just threw my lipstick on so I could be on time. I mean, I had like 10 minutes left before the interview, so like, I wasn't rushing too much. Um, but I'm actually pretty hungry now. Okay, like this, this is like the weirdest weather. Like, it got so dark out before. First, it was like super sunny and like really warm outside. And then it got super dark and started flurrying and raining for like two minutes. But it was flurrying in April. And it's almost the end of April. Like, what? I mean, I know it's not, like, too much of a rarity to get snow in April, but we usually don't get it at, towards the end of April. It's usually, like, towards the beginning. So it was just kind of bizarre. And then for my lipstick, I just went into the uh, Lawless Lipstick in the shade F uh, Fawn. It was so bizarre. Even my boyfriend's like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't really know why it did. Um, but I love this lipstick, so this is just, like, one of my go-tos. I actually want to put on a little bit more, because I had it on for a little while. But yeah, it was a Zoom interview, and it actually went really well, so I'm excited. Um, as far, so that's, as far as all my makeup goes, and then as far as a reading update goes, I did finish Heartless Hunter this morning. I didn't sleep very well again, so I just decided to finish the book this morning because I was up by like 7 a.m. and I was like, okay, I'm just going to finish it. And I had like 100 pages, so like I already read 100 pages today, um, but I just couldn't stay up to finish it last night. I was so tired from yesterday, but I read like 95 pages. I didn't really get to, I wanted to get to 100 pages, but then I just finished it this morning. And honestly, I didn't really love it. I wasn't really, like, super invested into it. I don't know. Just, like, there was something about it I wasn't really in love with. So I gave it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. That's actually, like, the lowest rating that I've given a book this month. I just didn't really love it. I really thought it was going to be a lot more magical than it was. I was like, ooh, I'm going to get a good, like, witch, witch hunter love story. And I did actually really love that ac that aspect of the story, but I found myself kind of bored in certain parts. I didn't really care about the characters that much. And everybody's like, oh my god, the ending's like amazing. And I had a feeling that I wasn't really going to love the ending. So I was like, eh, it wasn't really like a bombshell ending. Honestly, the best ending that I've read so far, like I've said, is Fourth Wing. Oh my god, that ending was incredible. But it didn't really have, like, any of, like, the the qualities that I really love about certain fantasy books. Like, Once Upon a Broken Heart and Throne of Glass and Akatar and Kingdom of the Wicked series and Cruel Prince. There's just so many things that make those series, like, amazing fantasy books that, like, this one I was just like, I'm never going to think about this book again. Like, that's how I feel. So I just wasn't really like, oh my god, my heart's beating out of my chest. Like, Powerless? I can't wait for Powerful to come out. That book was amazing. So, yeah, I didn't really love it. I thought it was going to be a five-star for me, and it really wasn't. I was just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> I liked it, but I didn't, I didn't love it. So, um, like I said, I was going to go into the Stolen Air duology after I finished Heartless Hunter. So the first book is The Stolen Air. And I'm so happy to be back in this world. It is so good already. I'm like, Holly Black just writes fantasy so beautifully. There's a lot of internal dialogue in the beginning, like there was in Heartless Hunter. But I'm not bored whatsoever. She just, the way that she writes is just so beautiful. She just has a way of like portraying terror 
and like making everything so magical and you're just so intrigued to find out what happens to these characters she's just an incredible storyteller so i'm absolutely loving this already i'm only on page 31 because i just started it today and usually i start like the first 30 pages if like i finished a book in the same day but i'm definitely going to read a ton more tonight i'm so excited i love it so far and then, like I said, I'm just going to jump right into Prisoner's Throne after that. And I think that these are potentially both going to be five star for me. I don't want to get my hopes up, but I'm already, like, absolutely obsessed with this. That, like, it's written exactly like Cruel Prince was. Like, it has the same exact style, and I love that. But I also feel like this story is going to be more evolved, and I just, I love her. She's just such a great writer. And then the last book that I'm going to read this month is Beach Read because I need to get that read before I read Funny Story next week because my first two reads of May are going to be Powerful and Funny Story. I have to read those over everything else and then I can just pick everything else that I want to read for May. So I'm so excited for May. I feel like I have a lot of good books. I haven't really fallen in love with any books this month, but I haven't read like a bad book. Heart, Heartless Hunter was kind of like, it was okay, but it, it wasn't bad and it wasn't great. So yeah, that's it. Bye.